Welcome along to a new edition of Down the Paisley Road West. I'm delighted to be in the Crown, the Crown Plaza today with Rangers legend, Lorenzo Amoruso. Rangers legend, welcome back. Welcome home, Amo. Welcome, you said the right word, welcome back home. That's right. Because every time I come back to Plaza, it's like to be home. So your Rangers career, you signed for Rangers for £4 million in 1997. You won three Premier League titles, three Scottish Cup Cups as well. And you scored in your last ever match against Dundee in 2003, the Scottish Cup final. You played 149 games and you scored 13 goals. Tell us about, first of all, signing for Rangers. Can you remember your first time when you came to Glasgow? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I remember it very well. Life was, was yesterday. Basically, I met David Murray and uh, Walter Smith at uh, Loch Long, basically, Cameron House Hotel. And uh, we've been watching, basically, Champions League final between Borussia Dortmund and Juventus that night. And I came in Glasgow because, of course, the chairman and the manager wanted to take me here. But uh, it was a fantastic night because I met two great persons, my point of view, of course, but they are definitely great persons. And uh, although that time I had uh, different other clubs in England who wanted to take me. Which where? Man United, one of them, but Leeds also, there were few, I have to say. But uh, my idea was the, to trust my feeling. Thank you. My instinct. My instinct. And that's why uh, basically the next morning I signed a contract for Rangers. <coughs> because the feeling that with, the, with the manager and the chairman was great. So I decided to sign for Although my first season for Ranger was very nightmare actually. Well, let's get to the big one and then your debut. You played your debut at San Gyro. Rangers versus Celtic. You came on with 20 minutes into the game. You strolled the match. And you, you had a free kick for 35 yards. God knows how it didn't go in. Tell us your memories of that game. I was supposed to even be on the bench that game to be fair because I was coming from 10 months injury almost and uh, Walter of course, I was improving during the training but of course uh, my fitness was not on top level yet but Walter basically through the week came to me two days before the game and he said uh, I can see you are improving a lot what do you think to come in the match uh, on the same final against Celtic? And I said, I don't know, boss, I'm not really 100% yet, but uh, you can judge me. You can judge me. You are a manager here. If you think I'm okay, either to come on the bench, I'll come. And he said, yeah, I, I saw you last couple of weeks. You've been working very hard, and your fitness is coming back properly. So I said, right, I'll go. I'll come on the bench. Uh, after 90 minutes, uh, Gordon Petrich had a uh, hamstring problem, and now I don't remember what. Uh, so I had to come on the pitch. And uh, that feeling was fantastic because I can remember all the Rangers support that were singing my name, even if I never played for this club. But because everybody was waiting, and I was the first one waiting for so long to play for my club. Tried to give them a fantastic hand, a great hand. Uh, but of course, for 10 months, I was living through the limb where I could see the team playing, but to really help them. And my debut was fantastic because, uh, you know, we had a fantastic game. We, we won the game. George Arda scored, Ali McCoy scored as well. Uh, I almost scored as well for the kick, but uh, my debut couldn't be perfect. So, fantastic memory. So that was your debut, but instantly the Scottish press had tried to make a big issue about the Italian signing for Rangers and the support. But would you agree that, that night you cemented yourself right away with the Rangers support and there was a relationship and a bond immediately with the fans? Uh, I think, I think uh, the, as I always say, the, uh, Lorenzo in Italy has been a player that uh, He's been always the one who gave uh, his 100% all the time against the top team and the small teams. If I became a good football player because uh, my, my attitude was 
to work hard all the time on the pitch and outside the pitch. Saying that, I think the fans, they understood uh, right away this kind of attitude and, uh, and I think the feeling between the fans, between the beginning of new season was a bit, because my condition was really the best, but after all, I think we understood each other and for six years we've been winning the trophies, this is the main thing for me and I will thank all the fans all the time. So that was your relationship with the fans, and obviously you spoke about your first Old Firm game, so is there any other Old Firm games that really stick out in your mind, and how do you feel about the game that some people ball is the biggest match in the world? Every Old Firm is, uh, is the match. Um, before I joined Rangers, uh, I heard, I read, uh, I've been reading, and, and I've been watching on TV sometimes what was uh, the game. Uh, but it's completely different scenes. Uh, you come here and you play for the attitude, the atmosphere in town, and the two supporters' uh, hands are, are so intense and you can't really describe unless you play. Uh, if you are a, a reporter, you can write with so many nice words, but until you, you, you feel for one of each team, I have to say, uh, you can't really tell what is the meaning of play for the old team. Which other old firm game would you say that stands out in? Have you had any other memories in any of the games? Every old film is a great memory, even the one you lose, because it makes you work harder to improve and do better than the next old film. So, luckily, I've been, I've been almost I think I, I never lost many games against them. I lost a uh, few games, four or five probably now, I don't remember very well. And most of the old team I played against Celtic, they, they were a good winner. Um, one that I remember very well, and I think it was a uh, starting of a new, new era in some ways, was uh, a game of the quarter-final of League Cup. Uh, we, we were coming from but, but two seasons, Celtic was winning almost everything, and Alec McLeish took over that season. Uh, basically, the league was already gone, and the only chance we had to bring the trophy back to Ibrox were winning the Scottish Cup and eventually the League Cup. And, uh, on the quarterfinal, we played against Celtic, and Celtic, they were definitely, uh, at that time, the favourite to win that, uh, that game. Uh, we went on the pitch like... Uh, we were in war, honestly, and I could see through the eyes of all my teammates the, the spirit, the, the strength, the, the right attitude, and we went the extra time, but we won it. That corner scored a fantastic goal, now I don't remember how long to go it was, but uh, his great shot was like if behind that shot it was full of... Rangers player, Rangers supporters, everybody was trying to push the ball behind the net. And it was a fantastic feeling because in the end we won that, uh, that game and we won also the trophy. So that is one of the, the games that I've got through my head. I mean, Bert, Bert Cornerman had that. I don't think anybody in the stadium was expecting Big Bert to hit that because when he, everyone laughs to this day, but he just he had it with such a force. It was a great strike. What was your reaction when he had it? Uh, Bert wasn't playing a great football at the time. Some su supporters were really about uh, criticizing him, but I think from that point, uh, everybody realized that Bert was a decent player. And that goal, uh, it was a def definitely a lift up for everybody, for himself, for, for, for us, for the supporters, for the club as well, and for the manager that was in definitely not an easy situation because he took over the job in November, as far as I remember, December probably. But of course, the league was almost gone, so the only chance we had uh, to, to lift the season up was winning the, the leagues, the, 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 the cups. And uh, I have to say, Alec made a fantastic job that season for us. You spoke very highly earlier on of Walter Smith. You are now speaking highly of Alex McLeish. How did you get on with Alex as a person and a manager? And what's your overall view on him? Uh, with Alec, I had a fantastic... Uh, feeling right away in the first moment because um, when he when an advocate uh, was uh, stepped over basically stepped down from his job I was down in Italy because I had an injury 
and I couldn't play, so I went to Inter for two, four days. So I didn't know about this change, but uh, probably knew, nobody knew this. I had a phone call from the manager, from Alec in Italy, and he said to me, Lorenzo, I'm you, your boss, Alec McLeish. I said, what? And nobody knew this situation. I said, yes, Alec will become a sports director, whatever, or director of football, whatever. So I'm the new manager there. I know you're in Italy. Treat yourself well, because when you're coming back, I need you. We need to do well. So it was uh, not a usual, not a common thing to do for a manager, but you could tell right away that Alec wanted to make it, to bring back the, the family spirit that uh, was missing in that uh, season at Ibrox. And uh, with Alec, even now, still speaking with him, lovely man, if, good manager, uh, nothing else. Not with Walter, with Walter uh, I didn't play lots of games with him because that season, as I said, it was a nightmare for me. Been out for 10 months, played like four, five, five games, six games, no many. And it's a big uh, disappointment for me because disappointment because uh, I wanted to give all my strength to the manager who brought me here. I never had a chance because I played the last five, six games of the season, which they were important, don't get me wrong, but that one was not the real Lorenzo because when you're out for so long, your, your, your head, your, your legs, your brain are not really 100% ready to fight for the title. Uh, that is a big pity for me because I couldn't really give a Walter, the, the perfect hand I wanted to give to him for everything he's done for this club. In my lifetime, some of the best football I've ever seen Rangers Football Club playing was in the first season under Dick Advocat. We had some absolutely fantastic players, world-class players in my opinion. Can you remember that season? And what's, your, what's your thoughts overall? I remember Dick the, whole, the season I played and uh, I have to say, yeah, we had a fantastic uh, football in that uh, period because uh, it was more like European football because we had the Dutch, we had the Italians, they were the Scottish, which were very good Scottish players. We had a good mix. There was an Argentinian, there was a French. Uh, I think uh, that kind of football uh, was very unique football because uh, we, we won the league by 24 points, something like that. So we were definitely cruising that season. Um, I don't know what uh, was the past Rangers because I wasn't playing for, for them. I've seen a lot of uh, lot of uh, tapes, and I can tell Rangers always, especially when they had a fantastic run in Europe in the Champions League. Um, of course, for us, this season after the change of a big era was important to, to make sure that uh, Rangers was doing the right thing. So we went on the pitch from the first day of the season and we started to play an excellent football and we won for two seasons in a row the league. So the three managers, who would you rate the highest? Alec McLeish, Dick Advocat or Walsh? I think every manager has his own view about uh, dealing with the players, managing, coaching. Um, I think I've been lucky because uh, each of them has a different uh, attitude on uh, talking, coaching and, uh, and organizing the team. Um, everybody knows that with Advocat, of course, from a uh, human point of view, uh, I didn't like so many things about him. But uh, as, a, as a manager, I can't really say anything against him, of course, because he's been a winner, not just here, he's been a winner everywhere he's been. So uh, from a human point of view, um, I didn't like the way he did so many things. Last one, of course, was taking away the Arman from me when uh, the team was not performing well. Um, of course, when you, you have this problem, you need to share this kind of uh, problem all together with the players, with the club, as a manager as well, and eventually even with supporters. 
uh, well, that period he was blaming everybody, of course me through them, upset himself, which is, which was basically the leader of the team. So I didn't like that kind of attitude. But as I said, that's part of the past. And uh, the only thing I was caring about, and I still care about, it, was the the future, the present of the Michael, yeah, which is Rangers. It was very clear at the time, and you just you just hit the nail on the head there when you said about how you felt when the armband was taken off you. But tell me about how it felt becoming the Rangers captain, the first Italian, the first foreigner really to be the captain of Rangers. Did you realise how? In Scotland, how, how important the role is as a captain, and how did they feel as an honour? Yeah, it is an honour. It's an absolutely honour because um, at the time they were players probably more well known in Scotland than me, like Colin Hendry and others, George Albert, others, there were a few others there. But um, I think my attitude has been always the one who that uh, never give up, not even during the training, not even during the friendlies. I'm a winner. I try to win everything, even when I play cards. If I lose, I get angry. So I think probably during that preseason with Advocat, probably uh, he's been focusing on me and highlighting that kind of quality. That's why he mentioned me as a man, as a captain, which was not uh, a surprise for me because whatever I've been. Even if I didn't have the armband with me, like in Fiorentina, but I was the captain in the dressing room. Yeah. Because most of the time I was the one who was organizing things, talking with the manager, talking with the chairman, and dealing with even with the fans sometimes. So for me, having an armband or not was not a big difference because my attitude will never change. Uh, of course, be a captain for this massive club, the first foreign player to be a captain was a. Uh, Definitely a, a fantastic honor. Uh, but of course, I knew that in the beginning I would have some problem, probably with some press, and that will happen because no many of the reporters did like me as a captain because I was Catholic, because I was Italian. But what I tried to, to explain to everybody, to any Rangers supporter, that uh, you should judge me as a, as a player, not just because my religion is Catholic. I would do everything, and I think I've done everything in my life to, to bring trophies to, to Rangers. Uh, my top was always wet any game, no matter what. So I think in the beginning there were some problems because my performances they were not very, very good. Because of course, when you're coming from an injury so long, you, you take time. But after a few months, I think the feeling with the fans has been fantastic. That's why we've been winning so long. And, and as you see, the Scottish press tried to make a big issue about the religious aspect of it and the cultural aspect being a foreigner, but would, would you agree that the Rangers supporters didn't ever turn no, the No, I think sometimes the press try to realise um, what they like to put in advance, uh, which at that time was easy for them to say Lorenzo cannot be a captain of Rangers because he's Catholic. Nobody said that, to be fair, in the front line. But through the lines, you could yeah. read that that was one of the reasons why. Uh, well, but when you signed for Rangers anyway, you knew the culture of the club and you were happy no, to No, I knew it. I knew it. But as I said, until you're here, you don't realize how big was and maybe less now, but was at this time. Uh, but still, for me, it was important to wear that jersey and doing well for that jersey. The, the truth of the matter is, it hurt the opposition, it hurt the Scottish media and it hurt Celtic support more than it did anyone. The, the captain of Rangers being a Roman Catholic and giving his all. That was the, that was the way the support is. Um, I think, as I said many, many times, um, you should judge me for what I do for the jersey, for what I do on the pitch. If on the Sunday I like to go in the church or wherever, I cross myself for some reasons. It's nothing to do with what I do on the pitch or what I do for this club. I think uh, my my contribution at Ranger Football Club has been fantastic yeah. because uh, I, what, everything I've done for this club was true passion. Because from the first day that I couldn't play, but I was on the stand watching the game, I could tell these fans are fantastic. These fans are absolutely unique. And through the six years I've been a Ranger, even now, 
the fact that I'm coming quite often in Glasgow and every time I met uh, Scottish Rangers supporters all over the world, not just in Glasgow, but I've been in America, I've been in Hong Kong, I've been everywhere, and you meet Ranger supporters, you know, you know that I've done the right choice to, to sign for Rangers. Okay, so that treble winning team, let's get to some of the players here. First of all, last this time last year I interviewed Michael Moles in the same place and asked him the same question. The Scottish media at the time tried to hint, as you said earlier, they never suggested it, but they hinted that there were certain problems at Ibrox at the time, that the Italians and the Dutch didn't like each other and there was, there was no speaking in that. What was your feelings on that? That's just media. They wanted to try to <laughs> give Rangers a problem because, as I said before, we were definitely the strongest team. And uh, there were no news if Rangers was winning or keep winning. So they had to find uh, a situation where they could sell more newspapers. Uh, so they found this uh, strange way to say that the Italian and the Dutch, uh, they were not going together. But I've got uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, witnesses who can tell you that uh, yeah. Restaurants, disco, play golf, it's strange, but we used to go out myself, Sergio, Giovanni Van Broncos, Arthur Newman, Fernando Rickson, Michael, Rod Wallace. This was our group. Yeah. We used to go out, basically, Craig Murk. On the park and off the park, you were Absolutely. Great, we were unique, and inside the park and outside the park. So, whatever has been said in that period was absolutely rubbish. The fact that the manager was Dutch, probably that was uh, something that the press uh, didn't like as well. Because, uh, but nobody wanted to say it. Yeah. Because when Adbert came here, basically he'd get rid of the old uh, players, great players. So nobody wanted to say that, but then uh, they had to find this, a strange way to say that uh, the Dutch here, yeah, they, they were not. They created an Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll start with the Dutch boys first then. I want to get one of the players in that team. Uh, Michael Moles, Bert Conterman, Arthur Newman, who I, be I believe Arthur Newman is slightly underrated because I believe he was probably one of the best in his position at the time in the world. You had Ronald De Boer and later on Frank De Boer. What's your memories of the players? Well, the first season, uh, the two players who came in they were uh, Arthur Newman, who was coming from the World Cup in France, if I don't remember wrong, yeah. and Giovanni Van Broncos. Uh, well, Newman, as you know, everybody knows, world class player. Giovanni was a young player, but potentially was a very good player. So the first season, we had a great season, fantastic lads, um, in the pitch, outside the pitch. Lovely guys, can't really say anything against them because uh, the feeling was fantastic. As I said, even outside the pitch, we used to go out quite often. Second season, Michael Moles and uh, Fernando Rixen came, and of course, the, because we needed somebody up front, and we, we needed probably somebody on the right back. So we we had this team. There and uh, I thought that nobody could stop us that season because uh, and Bert Coltman, sorry, Bert Coltman came as well because we were too strong on the paper. Um, I don't know if probably with so many players in another season, another era, we had we had lost the league because we were so good. But uh, we were probably too good. We were too good and uh, we lost that, uh, especially in the beginning of the season, we lost that kind of anger that uh, made us be a winner. And, uh, but that's not, nobody falls. It's no Dutch, no Italian. These are something that uh, happens sometimes. And uh, nothing you can do about it. When when you realize that that happened, it's too late eventually. Uh, 
that's how football goes. Before I move on to the Italian side there, I want to ask you about the Michael Moulds injury. You'll remember the game, Rangers versus Bayern Munich at Ibrox, and then they, they got the injury in Munich. Uh, how do you feel would have done if you hadn't injured that game? Oh, listen, Michael was a fantastic player, and uh, I still believe with Michael, that game in Monaco was uh, like, I don't know, uh, a big jinx, I don't know. It was very unreal. I never played another game like that in my life, never. The question I have to ask you, you probably ask yourself, how did we not get a, how did we not get a goal that night? How did we not win? That's why I said it's a game that I never played. I hope I never in another life ever hit will play another game like that because... There's 20,000 Rangers fans at the game. There were supporters all over the ground and the Rangers we were had, brilliant. We had, we had 15 chances. Yeah. Goal post, goal cross by so many saves from Bayern Munich goalkeeper. We lost the penalty after 10 minutes of the game maybe and we couldn't score. And then of course the losing Michael that game as well was a big, big problem for us. But still the team performed well as well, even in the second half. We had so many chances, and honestly, that is a game that I still remember just the words of uh, Beckenbauer, who said that the only team who should have won today were Rangers, because they were definitely the team on the pitch. We have been lucky as a team, but we take the qualification on the next stage of the Champions, of the Champions League. So, Michael, in that game, lost uh, part of his career, because when he came back, he came back well, but not like he was, and he took long before to get at his top level, unfortunately for us. So, we've got to the Italian players of that team. At the time, Rangers had signed a young Italian lad, an unknown lad, by the name of Rino Gattuso. But Rino, Rino was an unknown player for you, of course, in Scotland, but uh, on the youth level of the Italian uh, national team, Rino was a very well-known name. Everybody knew about him because he used to play for under-18, under-19. So he had his debut in Serie A with Perugia. So people knew about him, people, football people. Uh, Rangers signed Reno, and then of course signed me, signed Sergio Borini and Marco Negri. And for us, it was a fantastic to sign four players from Italy for your own country, because at least in the beginning, yeah. just to acclimatize, they'd be fantastic. Um, Everything was perfect with me, with Sergio, with Marco in the beginning. Then, of course, because of my injury, I went back to Italy for four months, more or less, to get treated because, because the cold weather was not in perfect condition to get treated and eventually to come back. Um, I left the team here, the club, in a fantastic start because I left basically early September. We were cruising the league. Marco Negri was scoring for fun. Scoring, honestly, just was like a joke. Scoring for Marco in that period. And I came back here basically in March. When I came back, uh, I could feel already there was something strange between the Italian guys. Marco had fell out with the, almost with the manager. He was not anymore regular player. Uh, Sergio and Marco, they, they were not really speaking and perfect. And then, uh, even with me, Marco had a strange uh, attitude. I don't know what the problem was. Probably his injury probably was a big part of it. I don't know, because the injury took him out. Uh, and when he came back, it seems he had lost his uh, feeling with the goal. I don't know, definitely made him uh, be a different person. Uh, he fell out basically with everybody there. But uh, myself, Sergio and Reno, uh, we felt part of the team still. And we kept, you know, doing what the Ranger spirit was made for. And if Sergio's been there for four years, myself for six years, and Reno just left because I didn't think he was good enough for Rangers, that's not my problem. But. Uh, Marco left and never made any more this career after all because I think he had some problem with himself, first of all. 
And the so no more connect with the speaker mod. No, I don't. Since I left, uh, since he left, never spoke, never spoke anymore. So he's an Italian's playing for Rangers. We play Parma two seasons in a row. The first season Parma knocked us out. The second season we knocked Parma out. I was at the game in Parma. It was a bit, it was a big news story, I think, for uh, European football at the time. How did it feel as an Italian? Well, Parma at the time uh, they they spent a lot of money to make that team uh, qualify for the Champions League. Players like Crespo, Ortega, Divaio, Sensini, Buffon, Cannavaro. I mean, they don't need to uh, any presentation. They had a fantastic team. But um, we knew that. We knew that it would have been a tough qualification for us. But we thought that we were strong enough to beat them. And that's what we did. Because the game in Ibrox, it was a perfect game for us. We played them out of the pitch from minus one minus 90 we were like i don't know the best team i ever seen playing in a football piece because everything we've done in that game was perfect i can't remember any small mistake in that game we won 2 nil, and i tell you i was so angry after the game because when we went through the dressing room, I said to the guys, guys, we should have killed them off completely because we had like another three, four easy chances and we missed them. So I said, on the return game, on the second leg, we're going to have a problem. We should have killed them off completely off the pitch. Even because I remember that their manager, a couple of days before the game, was saying that uh, Rangers team was a decent team, but the weak point was the defense lineup. So, of course, myself, Craig Moore, and Sergio Borrini, Arthur Newman. And uh, I was so angry, so I wanted to beat them badly. Badly. 3 nil, 4 nil, 5 nil. On the return game in Parma, uh, we knew it would have been a difficult game, knowing that the previous year we lost their 3 1. But Besides that, we had a fantastic composure. We were on the pitch from the first minutes. They tried to score goals, but we were on the back. We were solid like rock. Nobody could pass us. We lost the goal like two minutes to go just for a mistake from Lianne Charbonnier. But during the game, we had so many chances as well. We should have killed them off in that game as well. And in the end, uh, watching all the Rangers supporters up there in the stand celebrating on the plane, on the airport, celebrating the qualification of the Champions League was uh, priceless. It was a bank holiday that day, I think it was a... I don't remember, but... The reason I know is there was no alcohol sold in the streets, so we were completely <laughs> sober. There wasn't, a, there wasn't a one glass of wine or beer drank with the Rangers support that day. But the feeling Allegedly. Was, but the, the feeling was great, because... Uh, you knew that you made a fantastic uh, yeah. achievement for the supporters. And uh, especially knowing that the previous year you've been knocked out from the UEFA Cup from Parma. So I was more than happy because, of course, we were in Champions League and I was beating an Italian team as well. OK, so when we speak about that team, there was two famous Germans in that team as well. We start off with the goalkeeper, Stefan Kloss. How, how highly do you rate him? Well, Stefan actually wasn't playing that period because he uh, was injured. He came later. Uh, but Stefan... Reminds me a lot about Eddie Gorham as well. Kind of uh, style goalkeeper, very strong on the line, very strong in the leg, very reactive, very quick on the same things. Uh, maybe Andy is more has more the fun side of uh, the game as well. Yeah. He's, he's great company. Uh, Stefan is more serious as a player, but. Uh, Fantastic lad as well. Great lad, great goalkeeper. I mean, his career says enough because we win the Champions League with Borussia Dortmund as well. So, says enough how strong Stephanie is or was. OK, now, sir, as a supporter, watching from the stands here, sometimes I didn't know where to cry or laugh. 
What is going on here with these free kicks? Amoruso, Albert, who's, hit, who's hitting it? Who's not hitting it? What's going on? No, no, but George, George definitely uh, has a fantastic shot. Nobody can say the other way around. But when um, in Italy you speak free kick, scoring few goals as well. But of course, when I came at Rangers, George was the main man. But I wanted to to be part of it as well, especially because uh, George. Uh, can shoot free kick from right hand side, I could shoot free kick from the left hand side. Uh, so with Alvogad we were agreed to do that. But especially in the first season, as I said, for me it was almost a new life because after you stay out for 10 months, you need to get the feeling back of shooting, kicking, jumping. Seems strange to say, but Trust me, we are long for a long time out of football pitch. Uh, get the feeling of kicking from short distance or long distance, especially, is not easy. So, of course, in the beginning, my free kicks were horrible. But as more I was getting through the, the training and the, and the feeling of the, the fitness pack, I uh, was improving and I scored a few goals also from free kick. But George, of course, was outstanding because George. The power and the, the, the amount of ball is being scored from long distance is unbelievable. So, let's be honest here, who had the better free kick, Lorenzo Amoruso or George Alberts? Well, George, uh, I think he scored more goals than me, probably, uh, because he's a midfielder, because he has the chance to go forward as well. But as a defender, I have to say, uh, I've scored 50, 49 goals in my whole career. As a defender, I don't think it's bad. Um, George probably has more uh, attitude on free kicks. Uh, I had probably more attitude on scoring goals from different kind of set pieces, from corner, and many other situations. But I never been uh, doubting about it myself or George, who was the best free kick. I think it's, everything has been done for the, the best of Rangers. So I don't care if George scored 300 goals and Lorenzo scored just one goal. I don't care. Everything was done for the best of Rangers. You talk about a fantastic Rangers side and a fantastic era, and playing for Fiorentina as well. So, to ask you a question, did you really want to play for that Scotland team? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I couldn't play just because at that time uh, I played a few games for London 21, so at that time there was the rule that you couldn't play for another national team. Uh, probably from that case, the rule has been changed. In fact, those days now, just if you play for one national team, you cannot play anymore for the national team. If you play for under 21, then you can still can change your national jersey eventually. Uh, yeah, I wanted to play against with uh, with uh, with Scotland because uh, I never had a chance to play for my Italian national team. Probably because I left the country young. I don't know. But when I had the chance to to play for Scotland, my we started this interview saying, welcome back home. Yeah. So if that is the feeling that I had since the first day I was in Scotland, now you why I said yes to play for Scotland National Team. OK, so there's an old that age, and I've seen me say in Glasgow, once a ranger, always a ranger. <laughs> you left Glasgow, and many years later, Rangers came to your hometown, your home team. Fiorentina played in Florence for the UEFA Cup semi-final. It was the only time I'd ever met in my life that night. What I found strange was you were walking to the game, walking by the Rangers support and into the, the, the section we're in. The Rangers support were all over you, they adored you. The Fiorentina fans that seemed to be not so, so bothered, they were just not so great. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, of course, the memories that uh, I left on Rangers, they were definitely higher than, uh, than uh, the Fiorentina fans, even because I won with Fiorentina uh, Italian Cup and Italian Super Cup uh, many years ago, basically season before I left them. So uh, everybody was thinking Lorenzo is going to support Rangers. Uh, and I said to myself, Rangers and Fiorentina have been uh, two big part of my life, big part of my career, because uh, with Fiorentina I made up the big football in the world, and Rangers gave me fame everything it's been like a second life so I said I can't really support one team it's impossible for me I said to them 
which team will win, for me it doesn't matter because I will be in the final anyway. So yes. for me it was a good fun about that. Which is, uh, which is fair enough, which leads me to the last point and that, before I mention anything else, when we naturally put the ball in the net, did you give it to get in there? I was happy, honestly. <laughs> to feel, I was like 50% the night. Um, because, as I said, I live in Florence, still live in Florence. I decided to live in Florence. So for me, same Rangers and Celtic is my football life, both of those two teams. Even if I, uh, at, the, at Fiorentina played just for two seasons, but it was the season who launched me at a higher level. Yeah. And probably because Fiorentina, I played at Rangers, I played here and I came here. So without Fiorentina, probably Lorenzo would have never met Rangers. So it was a strange feeling to be fair. But in the end, I was happy in any case because Rangers was still, it was my Rangers because Walter was back as manager, Ali was at the coach, Duran was there, Barry Ferguson, other players, Fernando Rixen, Nacho Novo, they were players that I knew there still at Rangers. In Fiorentina, they were all new players. So inside myself, uh, of course, uh, something was more for Rangers than for Fiorentina because a big part of Lorenzo's career was still there because just watching Stefan Klaus, watching Barry Ferguson, watching Ali as a manager, as a coach, Walter there, Fernando Rixen, as I said, my ex-teammates, probably a big part of my heart was there with Rangers. And the support that night was fantastic. I think uh, Rangers support has always been fantastic. Wherever we've been, we've been in Turkey, we've been in Monaco, we've been in Germany, we've been in France, wherever we've been, uh, in Greece, uh, in the United States for two season. Rangers support has always been fantastic, so I can't really say anything against them because uh, if you are part of a club like that, most of the, the time is thanks to the fans because in those days especially after so many problems this club is having you can tell thanks to the fans the club still in a high level uh, of uh, mentality of high level of uh, supporters because wherever you go wherever you see a Scottish person all over the world there are Rangers supporters, and that is something amazing. OK, before we finish the interview, you're currently staying in Italy. You're still a Rangers man. So you've watched what's happened. You've, you've watched what's happened over the last two seasons with Rangers. In the scenario they find themselves in now in the third division. How do you feel they were treated? Do you, do you feel it's fairly treated? And how do you feel, though, the current situation is? Definitely, I didn't feel right. Because um, I don't know what is the truth. And probably nobody knows where he's different. The only thing uh, I felt was that uh, putting down Rangers in third division was something not right. Because uh, a club like that, that has been leader of Scottish football for so many years, winning 52 trophies, 52 leagues, 54, sorry. Uh, can't be treated like that, no way. But uh, the Scottish Federation thought the other way around. They put Rangers in third division. And now, seems that Rangers were not guilty. But what was hurting me a lot, most of all, was the fact that uh, the Scottish Federation wanted to take away all the trophies from this club. Trophies that have been winning from players from the past and from the present because I was there. That was something very bad 